Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video I'm going to be talking about princesses and their use as an agent in the game Medieval 2 Total War. Unlike merchants or priests, you can't directly recruit a princess. To get one, she must be a female family member and the daughter of either a faction heir or faction leader. She will become usable as an agent once she reaches the age of 16. Other female family members will still receive marriage offers but you just can't use them uh, as an agent for diplomacy or actually arranging marriages. The faction must be Catholic or Orthodox. As a general rule, there are some exceptions like Lithuania campaign. Um, there may be some mods where this is a bit different, but I'm not going to go into mods because there's a lot of different ones. Princesses have two active abilities, diplomacy and marriage. To initiate diplomacy, Right click on the army, settlement, diplomat or princess of another faction and this will open the diplomacy screen. Here you can negotiate agreements such as trade agreements, alliances, ceasefires, etc. Two key differences um, from a diplomat. You can't um, bribe with a princess and neither can they be bribed. And you can also um, negotiate a marriage alliance with uh, the faction heir or faction leader with another um, faction. And then your, your faction and their faction will be allied. Uh, in my experience, it doesn't make it any less likely for the other faction to betray you. The second active ability is marriage. Firstly, she can attempt to marry a general from her own faction, assuming they are not siblings. Cousins and uncles seem to be okay. To initiate this marriage, select the princess, then right click on the lucky man. As he's from the same faction, there will always be a 100% chance of success. Uh, for demonstration purposes, I've given Constance a couple of extra traits just to show you how this works. And uh, this general only has one trait, Tanner for command. So, if we get them married, a little film will play of a marriage. <laughs> um, I would just like to note for accuracy's sake that medieval brides uh, didn't tend to wear white. Um, I, I believe that they usually wore blue and brides didn't start wearing white until I think Queen Victoria did it. But anyway, that's um, not that relevant. So we'll move on. Um, so... This will have changed his traits. So as you can see, he now has the trait Royal Ties. So a general will always gain this trait when he marries a princess agent, even if she's a, a foreign princess. So this adds three loyalty. Now, uh, some of the other traits add um, some score to public order. So these two, wife is lovely, wife is noble, improves public order. So it makes him a better governor. And uh, this trait, wife is wise, he got because his wife had an intelligence trait. So he brings in more trade income and more tax income. Uh, it is important to bear in mind that this can also work the other way around. So if the princess has a lot of negative traits, it can make him worse as a governor. Uh, another benefit from doing this is that the general will not be susceptible to seduction by a foreign princess and therefore end up leaving the faction. Attempting to marry a general from another faction is a little different. He must be from a Christian faction, but it doesn't matter whether he's Orthodox or Catholic. Also, he must be unmarried and not the faction heir or leader. I've got one, two, three princesses here, so I'm going to run through uh, this scenario and explore the possible outcomes. Attempt one, I'm going to send Inez to attempt to marry this guy, Bergthor I think his name is, with a 33% chance of success. In this case it's been rejected. She's still in our faction, sometimes they will gain a negative trait, but that doesn't seem to have happened in this case. Second attempt, I'm going to send Antonia to attempt to marry Anselm with a 66% chance of success. In this case, she's left our faction and joined his faction instead. You can see on the family tree it says disgrace 1218, so we can't play her as an agent anymore. She's left the faction. Third attempt with Enes, I think that's how you say her name, will attempt to marry Otto von Castle. In this case, it has been successful. 
So we get the little wedding film playing. She's now married to him. Uh, here you can see on the family tree. We can't play her as an agent anymore, but Otto von Kassel is now part of our faction. What are the practical applications of this, you may be asking? Well, if you found a particularly good general, this is a way to get him to join your faction where bribery wouldn't work. Otto von Kassel would have had seven loyalty before joining our faction. He's gained another three from royal ties. So I think it's uh, less likely that bribery would have worked in this instance. However, he's, he's got a few good traits. Um, fine armour, military engineer, active builder. But I don't really think he's anything that special. It would probably be more effective and more likely to be successful to just take game actions that build a better general rather than doing this. I think there is a better application of uh, using your princesses to get generals, and that's to take advantage of the AI's tendency to leave a lone general in a settlement. Lone generals have a tendency to get lonely and their bodyguard follows them to their new faction. As you can see here, Innsbruck is now left completely defenseless. So I can just attack it, stack it, and um, yeah, then I've got a new castle. Thanks very much, Otto von Castle. And then we'll hire some mercenaries, and then it's going to be a lot harder for them to take it back. Charm level is out of 10 and affects the likelihood of success for diplomatic negotiations and marriage to foreign generals. As an example, we have two charm here and a 29% chance of success, and six charm, giving us a 59% chance of success. As it's a foreign marriage, it's also affected by the loyalty of the general. This is a similar rating to merchants and finance, priests and piety. Charm level is the total sum of all their traits and ancillaries. A big difference, however, is that it's a lot more difficult with princesses to directly influence this. There are no buildings like merchants and priests have, i.e. markets and churches, to improve the traits. The father's influence do have some impact. Yes. If we look at Eva, she has intelligent lady trait. Her Your sister majesty. Enes has the same trait. And their father here, King Afonso, has intelligent traits. So that's where they've got it from. The best way you can try to improve their traits is to send them on successful diplomatic missions. I did do some testing and kept a tally of successful missions and gaining traits. It didn't pan out quite how I thought. There didn't seem to be a set pattern. Sometimes I'd complete a successful mission each turn and I'd gain a charm each turn up to a certain point. Sometimes there'd be no gain even after completing several missions. I um, would speculate that maybe this is bugged or it could be that it's quite random and I just got lucky in a few streaks, or it could be that there's a pattern I haven't been able to discern. If you know, do let me know in the comments below. Um, the treasury can have a bit of an impact, but this isn't going to be something you're going to go out of your way to do in-game, I'm guessing. Uh, as you can see here, England has got minus nearly 5,000 gold. Cecilia normally starts with uh, three charm. She's gained two as a result of this. This also works the other way around. If you have lots of money, they can start to gain pretentious and snobbish traits. You can also use console commands to add extra traits if you wanted to. I mean, I would, wouldn't do this in normal gameplay. I might class it as cheating, but just to show you how it's done, you open your console. The key varies depending on what type of keyboard you're using. You type in uh, give trait space the character's name in quotation marks. Uh, so in this case, uh, Cecilia, it is capital sensitive uh, space. And then we'll just use uh, good princess, which again is case sensitive space. And then the level, let's just give a good princess for, we'll close that. Daughter of the Crown. And you can see she's getting this trait here. I will include some links in the description that you can access if you wish. A few points of trivia. If by the age of 40 she hasn't got married, died, 
or left for another faction, then she will become a nun and completely disappear off the family tree. If a princess leaves the faction while attempting to marry a foreign general, you can still attempt this an infinite number of times with your other princesses, just in, until you run out of princesses, I suppose. A princess can also see generals through the fog of war, so long as you know that the settlement is there. So if I was to just double click on Magdeburg, you can't tell there's a general there. If I right click with a princess, you can see that there's a general. If you hover over somewhere, it says whether or not potential suitors are there. If you accept a lot of adoptions, you will get fewer princesses, as each family member can only have a maximum of four children. Uh, in this Venice game, for instance, I did a lot of adoptions and there's only one, two princesses over 115 turns. You can get a mission to marry a specific princess to a specific general and then you get some money for it. I'm not exactly sure what causes it to trigger and it's pretty rare, so I haven't got an example to show you, but this is something that can happen. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, comment or subscribe. I also stream on Twitch, so I've included that in the description.